If you've ever noticed that the construction of the world's next largest skyscraper tends to accompany a looming recession, then you're not alone. This is something creatively termed the skyscraper effect, or otherwise known as the skyscraper curse. Now, this is an idea which has been around for a while, stemming back to the economist Andrew Lawrence, who in 1999 created the skyscraper index which is more of a descriptive timeline than a traditional index, noting that for more than a hundred years, history has been full of examples of the world's tallest building coinciding with the start of a global economic crisis. Take for instance the MetLife Tower in New York. Announced in 1905 to stand at over 700 feet, it's preceded the Bankers' Panic of 1907, or the Empire State Building. Completed in 1931 to rise to over 1,250 feet, it coincided with the Great Depression, laying largely dormant for years. More recent examples include Malaysia's Petronas Towers, completed just before the Asian financial crisis, alongside the world's current tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, which at over 2,700 feet became the tallest building just before the global financial crisis. In fact, its very name is a result of the crisis. Initially called the Burj Dubai, it was bailed out by the ruler of Abu Dhabi, Crown Prince Khalifa, who in exchange put his name on the mega project. But what's the economic explanation behind the so-called skyscraper effect? Well, this has a lot to do with the business cycle. As the economy enters an upswing, several things occur. Economic expansion encourages a surge in lending, asset prices begin to rise, and perhaps most importantly, confidence increases. All important factors as they align with the investment psychology around skyscrapers. You see, as an asset class, they are speculative by their very nature. It's rare for them to receive tenant commitments for occupation prior to building. Instead, there is an expectation that once built, they will of course be occupied. And when it comes to financing, there are few better symbols of easy money than a skyscraper especially as the vast majority of megastructures are not actually self-financed by the builders, but instead rely on huge sums of cash. Money which is most likely to be available to such a speculative investment at, or at least close to, the peak of the business cycle. Now, given the time lag between announcement, construction and completion, this helps to explain why skyscrapers, or other mega projects for that matter, can end up opening their doors at seemingly the worst possible time just as the economy enters, or is in the middle of, a downturn. Something which, if true, has important repercussions. Implying that the creation of the world's next tallest building could be used as a leading economic indicator, providing a signal that an asset bubble is emerging, or that the economy is about to enter a downturn, representing a huge win for policymakers and investors, who are always looking for economic signals, or the next big thing. But whilst all this is good in theory, does the research support a skyscraper effect? Well, a 2014 study found that skyscraper heights weren't a useful measure of an economy's turning points, listing plenty of examples throughout history where a record-setting skyscraper was achieved a long way off a recession. Whilst height can't be used to forecast a change in GDP, the study found that GDP could be used to predict changes in height meaning the height of a new skyscraper is somewhat determined by how fast the economy is expanding. But height alone doesn't indicate a recession is nearby, at least not in every case. Which perhaps makes the skyscraper effect a great example if nothing else of how correlation doesn't always equal causation. Now, we'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are in the comments below. Do you think the skyscraper effect is just a coincidence, or something more? Does human psychology play a bigger role? We'll also be looking to create more short videos in the future, especially for smaller topics like this. And if you're watching this an hour after upload, then we'll be going live on the Discord server general discussion. Also, if you think we've earned it, consider leaving us a like and subscribing. And as always, see you in the next video.